Hi you 12, welcome back to another HSC revision video. Today we're going to look at a bunch of networks questions ranging from band 2 all the way up to band 6. Thank you to one of my students for requesting this topic. If you have a requested topic for a future revision video, please let me hear about it. Okay, starting off with a band 2 question. This is from the Nessa sample questions published a couple of years back. It's a multiple choice question. We've got a network diagram. What is the sum of the degrees of the vertices? in this network. So as always, I fully recommend you to always pause the video after I've read the question and um, have a think about how you would approach it or even try it yourself before I run through the solution. Okay, so for this question, all you need to know is that the degree of a vertex is how many connections it has. So if we look at this vertex on the left, it's got a degree of one. The vertex down the bottom here has one, two, three, four. So its degree is four. We've got two up the top, We've got three over here on the right, and we've got two down here. So to answer the question, we just have to do one plus four plus two plus three plus two, which gets us an answer of 12. So the correct answer was D, the sum of the degrees of the vertices is 12. Okay, on to the next one, which is our band three question, which also comes to us from the Nessa sample questions. We have the diagram shows the possible paths in kilometers for laying gas pipes between various locations in this diagram below. Okay, gas is to be supplied from one location. Any of the locations can be the source of the gas supply. What is the minimum total length of the pipes required to provide gas to all the locations? Okay, so for two marks, we are being asked to link all of our stations, all our locations actually, uh, in the shortest way possible. This is called a minimum spanning tree. Okay, they haven't actually asked for it, but what we are actually finding here is the minimum spanning tree. So we're trying to find the shortest way of linking all the vertices without creating any loops. So the way we do that is we pick an edge. I like to start with the shortest one, which we can see here is the five, and we're going to include the five, so we're going to highlight it. So we've linked Somerville and Parkview. Now we'll look for another small number. The next smallest number is seven, but we're not going to include seven in our spanning tree because then we would have this loop here because we already have a connection between Somerville and Parkview. So we're going to ignore the seven. We're going to go on with the eight that links Somerville and Newville. And there's our next edge. Okay, the next shortest number is the 10. So we'll link Beachview and Somerville. And then the next shortest option is the 11 between Old Town and Newville. And there you have it. We have linked every single location together in a spanning tree. If we add up these weights, we'll have five plus eight plus 10 plus 11. So we'll get a total length of 34 kilometers. Okay, so if you drew your spanning tree, you would have got one mark. And if you added up your weights and got 34 kilometers, you'd be getting two marks. Okay, beautiful. On to the next question, the band four, which is from the 2019 HSC exam paper. We have the network diagram shows the tracks connecting eight picnic sites in a nature park, shown right here. The vertices A to H represent the picnic sites. The weights on the edges represent the distances along the tracks between the sites in kilometers. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. So the question is, uh, for the first part, each picnic site needs to be provided drinking water. The main water source is at site A on the left here. By drawing a minimum spanning tree, calculate the minimum length of water pipes required to supply water to all of the sites if the water pipes can only be laid along the tracks. So once again, in a lot of uh, confusing words, all they're really asking you to do is, here's a network diagram for two marks, draw me the minimum spanning tree. In HSC, there would be space below the question to draw your minimum spanning tree. We're just going to do ours on the network diagram for today. Okay, if the last question made sense to you, you're more than welcome to pause and try this one by yourself. Otherwise, let's just dive in. So once again, we're trying to link all the vertices, shortest way possible, no loops. I'm going to start with the shortest length or the shortest weight, I should say, which is between G and F, which is the one. Looking through the diagram, the next shortest option is the two between G and H. So I'm going to include the two, and then we're going to include the three between C and H. Okay, now our next shortest number is the four. We are not going to include between C and G because we already have a link between C and G. This four is going to create a loop. So we're not going to do that. We're going to have this four over on the left linking A and B. Okay, now our next shortest options are the fives. So we're going to include this five to link B and C. And now we've got three fives over here. We don't want to include all of them because we'll, again, we'll make a loop. So out of these three fives, you only need to have two of them. 
you can pick any two. I'm going to go from H to D and from H to E. Five and five. And there you go, we are connected to every single vertex. We don't have any loops, so this is our minimum spanning tree. Uh, we want to find the length of the water pipe. So once again, we're going to add up all the weights of the edges. So one plus two plus three plus four plus the three fives gets us a total length of 25 kilometers. Well done if you got the same answer. Okay, the next part of the band four question. Uh, one day, the track between C and H, so the three right here, has been closed. State the vertices that identify the shortest path from C to E that avoids the closed track. Okay, so we're going to close off the three between C and H, so we can't use this edge, and we're trying to find the shortest possible way from C to E. Now these questions usually turn into a bit of glorified trial and error, so pause the video, see if you can find the shortest way of getting from the C up here to the E down here. Okay, so if we go around the edge, we can go 7 and 5, which makes 12. So we're trying to see if we can um, beat 12. If we did 4 and then 1 and then 7, again, we would get 12, so that's the same. Uh, the shortest one that I can see is going to be going down the 4, and then up the 2 to make 6, and then the 5 makes it 11. Okay, so the 4, 2, 5 is your shortest path with a length of 11. Okay, cool, we're up to the band five one, so we're getting really scary now. We've got Sven and Bjorn are renovating a bathroom. The renovation includes activities A to L, and we've got a network diagram below showing the completion times of all the activities. Okay, so this is gonna be what's called a critical path question as we've done before with some boxes for forward scanning and backward scanning. Okay, so here are our questions. We've got three questions. First one, which two activities immediately precede activity G? Okay, so activity G in our diagram is right here. Now, which two activities are immediately before G? Well, we can see C leads into G exactly, but what's this dotted line mean? Well, this is what's called a dummy line, and this means that D is a predecessor for F, but D is also an immediate predecessor for G. So it's kind of like D is finishing in two spots. It's finishing here, but it's also finishing here. Okay, so the two activities that are right before G is the C and the D. Okay, question B, by completing the diagram shown, calculate the minimum time required to complete the renovation. All right, so we're trying to find the um, earliest finish time for this job, and we're gonna do what's called forward scanning. Okay, so we start off by writing a zero at our start, and now we're essentially trying to find the longest time to get to any of the vertices. Okay, the critical path is the longest path through your network diagram. So from the start, using A is gonna take us five, um, I think these were weeks, five weeks here. B is gonna take us four, which gets us a total of nine weeks. Okay, so five plus four. Down the bottom, we're doing five plus 12 to get 17. And then up the top, we're doing four plus seven, oh sorry, we're doing nine plus seven gets us 16. Now, where it gets interesting is when you have a vertex where there is multiple paths to the vertex. So for this one in the middle, we could go the five and then go across with the seven, which is gonna get us 12. We could go the 17 down here and then go up zero, which is gonna get us 17. Okay, so whenever you have two options, like I said, you're always trying to find the longest path to any vertex. So for this one in the middle, we're gonna take the 17 down the dummy line rather than the 12 straight across. You're trying to make the first number as big as you can. Okay, now for the vertex down here, there's only one way to get here. We're gonna go 17 plus three makes 20. Now the one in the middle, we've got three ways of getting here. We could go 16 plus six, which would get us 22. We could go 17 plus 12, which gets us 29. Or we could go 20 plus eight to get us 28. So we're gonna go for the bigger number, which is the 29, which is the 17 plus the 12. And then to the finish, we could go 16 plus seven makes 23. We could go 20 plus seven makes 27. Or we could go 29 plus four makes 33. So we'll do that. So we have our biggest number, which means that the earliest time we could finish this renovation is 33. And this was days actually, not weeks, pardon me. Okay, so you would get one question if you showed some evidence of forward scanning and you would get two marks if you got the correct final answer of 33 days. Okay, now part C is the band five part. Part C says, hence, what is the float time for activity E? 
So to find the float time for activity E, we need to know what the earliest start time is and what the latest start time. The float time is going to be the difference between these two numbers. It's kind of considered as how much spare time you have. So to do this, we have to do what's called backward scanning, which is a bit tougher, which is why this is the band five question. Okay, so backward scanning, um, we're doing the same thing, but we're in reverse. So we're going backwards and we're subtracting numbers and we're always trying to make our second number, so that the, the number that we're trying to get to needs to be as small as possible. Okay, so for example, we're gonna start off with going 33 back four gets us to 29. Okay, if these two numbers match, it means that you've got no float time and it's what's called a critical activity. Okay, now down the bottom, we could have done um, we could have done 13, sorry, we could have done 33, take away seven, which gets us 26. Or we could do uh, 29, take away eight, which gets us 21. We wanna make that second number as small as we can, so we'll do the take away the eight and get us the 21. Okay, up the top, we could have done uh, 33, take away seven again, which would get us uh, 26. Or we could go 29, take away six, which gets us 23. We'll take the smaller number, which means we're taking the longer path. So we get a 23 here. Okay, now in the middle, uh, we're gonna go only one way back to this vertex. It's the 29, take away 12, gets us 17. Uh, across the top, we could do only one way back here. We've got to do 23, take away seven to get us 16. Down the bottom, we could do 17, take away zero, or we could do 21, take away three. So we wanna get the smaller number, so we'll go the 17, take away zero. All right, if your second number is smaller than your first number, you've done something wrong and you need to double check your maths. Like I said, if they match, it means they're a critical path. Um, that's not what we need for this question. Okay, and at the start, we could do 17 back seven and get 10. We could do 16 back four and get 12 or we could do 17 back 12 and get five. We'll take this option, which gets us the smaller number, which gets us five. Okay, there's all our backward scanning done. So now if the question asked us, we would be able to see where our critical path is. It's where those two numbers are matching up. But for this question, all we need to know is, what is the float time for activity E? Activity E is here. So we're looking at the boxes at the start of the activity. So the earliest possible time we could start this activity is nine days. The latest we could start it and still finish on time is 16 days. So we have a float time of seven days and there is your one mark answer. Okay, finishing off with our toughest question. This is from the 2019 HSC. It's got a band six component. So a museum is planning on an exhibition using five rooms. The museum manager draws a network to help plan the exhibition. Vertices represent the five rooms and the weights of the edges represent the maximum number of people per hour who can pass through the security checkpoints between the rooms. So the first part for one mark, this is not the band six part, is what is the capacity of the cut shown? So what they're asking here is how much flow is being blocked by this dotted line? So you gotta be careful with these questions because you only are supposed to count flow that's going in the correct direction. What I mean by that is our dotted cut is splitting our network diagram into two sections. One section has the entry and the other, the other section has the exit. Okay, now, Flow is only blocked if it's going from the entry side to the exit side. So the 70, the 90, and the 130 are all good. They're going from blue to red. However, CB is an arrow going from the red side to the blue side. So this flow is not actually being blocked by the dotted line. The reason for this is that any people who have gotten to C have had to go through AC or AD. So they've already been blocked by the red line. No one can get through to C and get through 40. Okay, but the short, short answer is you only uh, count the flow that's going in from the entry side to the exit side, which is not the 40. So the capacity of our cut is 70 plus 90 plus 130, gets us an answer of 290. Okay, for the next part, a fair bit of reading, we've got museum manager is planning for a maximum of 240 visitors to pass through the exhibition, which is why the entry and the exit have a capacity of 240. Uh, by what? By using the minimum cut maximum flow theorem, the manager determines that the plan does not provide sufficient flow capacity. Draw the minimum cut on the network and recommend a change that's going to increase capacity to 240. Okay, so first part for the first mark, um, you're welcome to pause the video and see if you can find a cut through this network that has a capacity less than 240 because we want to increase it to 240. 
So I'll give you a hint. There is a cut through this network that blocks 230 visitors. Have a go, see if you can find it. Okay, if you found the line going through the 80, the 40, the 65, and the 45, which adds up to make 230, that is the smallest possible cut in this network diagram, which means it's the maximum flow of the network. Okay, all the edges are flowing from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, so we're all good on that front. Um, so there's our minimum cut, which is our maximum flow. Okay, now the tricky part at the end is um, to recommend a change that's gonna increase the flow capacity from 240 visitors, not oh, sorry, to 240 visitors per hour. So we know that these four edges are our weak links and we've got to recommend which one of them to increase by 10 so that we can get 240 people from the entry to the exit. So you've got to be a bit careful with this question because it's really easy to uh, recommend something wrong here. There is more than one right answer. I'm just going to show you uh, the one that stuck out to me the most. All right, we're going to do a fair bit of maths here. So try and stick with me. We have 240 people coming in through the entry. We send 80 down here, 90 down here, and 70 down here. 80 plus 90 plus 70 makes 240. So everyone coming in through the entry is going down one of these three checkpoints. Okay, now down the bottom here, um, our 70 is going to be split up into 45 plus 25. That makes 70. So 45 down here, 25 up here. So we've sent 90 down here. We've sent 25 up here. So waiting at C, we have um, 115 people. Now we can send 65 down to CE. And then 115 take away 65 leads us with 50. So we have 50 people left over, but only room for 40 in this checkpoint. So it's definitely going to be a case of improving one of these two checkpoints is going to be increasing our flow. What I want you guys to think about is vertex B up here. We have 80 people coming in through here. We have 40 people coming through here, which makes 120 people. However, the edge BE has a capacity of 130 people. So we've got 120 going in, we've got room for 130 coming out. So this edge here is not optimized because the inflow and the outflow do not match. That's why my recommendation is to increase this 40 to a 50, because we have an extra 10 people at C. Then 80 plus 50 will make 130. We'll have 130 in and 130 out. So our network will be fully optimized and we'll have 240 in and 240 out. You'd probably also get the marks if you increased C by 10, that would probably also work. But my answer is to increase B to make use of the 130 on BE. That's probably the answer that Nessa was hoping you would go for if you're a band six student. Okay, sweet, that'll do it for today's video. Hopefully that helped you in some way. I hope you got um, a little bit better at networks or helped you revise um, some of the concepts. Like I said, if you uh, have a suggested video for the next one, please let me know. All right, see you guys later, bye.